Nick, it's so great to be here with you on the show floor at MWC. So, innovation is at the heart of technology and technology strategy. Could you share how your new in-house chipset designs are shaping the future of your products, and what advantages do those bring to customers? Okay, so even if I put aside the value of us controlling the components and not being dependent on component shortage or stuff like that when we buy components from other vendors because now it's our own chip. The fact that we took many parts of a system, like the digital part, the analog part, the networking part, and we put them on, in, on one piece of silicon, allows us to have much better integration and therefore much better performance. So if, for example, if you take the Eben product that we are now demonstrating in Mobile World Congress, if you go to our, our competitors, you will see that usually Eben products are going up to 10 gigabit per second. Now, because we have uh, our own chip with wider capabilities, we can do 25 gigabit per second in one, in one box, one product. So it's more than double than our competition. Millimeter Wave is playing an increasing role in high capacity networks. Can you talk to me very briefly about how you're making the most and making the spectrum most efficient possible? So, as I said, our chip is more powerful, it's our own technology than other components. So, this chip can today digest wider chunks of spectrum in the millimeter wave space. So if most components can digest up to two gigahertz, 2000 megahertz of space, we can do four. So it's double the capacity. Now because this chip has even better efficiency, it's more than double. As I said, it's 25 gigabit per second versus the 10 gigabit per second that most uh, our competitors can demonstrate. With the evolution of networks, how do all outdoor and split mount architectures fit into today's landscape and what factors should customers decide between when considering them? So first of all, I would say it's not this or that, it's both. I think customers and us, the vendors, we should master both use cases or both architectures. So if you have a simple link that you want to install, you will never be able to install faster and with lower cost than all outdoor. Very easy to deploy, less need of real estate on the ground, less need of air condition, power, right away, and so on and so on. But if your link is, uh, I would say, a bit more complex, you have multiple carriers in one link, you have multiple directions in one site, then you would, win, you, you would need a split mode configuration, and you should get a, a, from your vendor a good radio and a good indoor unit that can uh, provide the solution. So AI is inescapable at this show. Can you talk to me a little bit about AI-driven network services and network operations, and also uh, how you guys are addressing that? Generally speaking, AI is good when you have many, many data points and you want to have a system that learns. So we believe AI in our space have two main use cases. The first one is when you do network management and you want to do prediction. You want to do things before they happen. I would say what is faster than real time? Anticipate. Anticipate what's going to happen. So we provide a few AI engines in our network management system. And in this way, our customer can see that in two weeks or maybe two months, there will be a problem. So we can go to our customer and tell them, look, you don't have to wait until your customers start to complain about bad service, bad reception. We can tell you, go ahead now, increase your capacity or solve your configuration problem because it will happen in two months. So this is one use case, network management. The other one is root cause analysis. As networks became more complex, gr growing and become bigger, sometimes finding the root cause of a problem becomes a bit more complex. So our AI system really learned from the past, takes into consideration many data points, and uh, able to tell the customer, look, most likely the problem is there. Go and look for the problem, and by that, fix problems much faster with less investment. So one of the key themes here at the show is looking towards the future. So talk to me a little bit about how Saragon plans to push the boundaries of connectivity in the future. So I think we should look at it at least in two folds. One is better products. So the IP100E that we are now showcasing, as I said, more than double the capacity of anything else. Well, in the future, this is E-band. In the future, our customer will look for additional bands. W-band, D-band. These bands are not regulated yet, 
but as the capacity will grow in the future, most likely the, we, we will need them and our customers. And our chip, the system of chip that we mentioned, is the, is the best, best asset for this type of powerful products. The second aspect to look into is not only products. We believe that many of our customers want to get from us solutions. So not everybody can have the technical department that can take our products, deploy them in the optimal way, maintain them in the optimal way, maybe even plan the network in the optimal way. So we are now creating an envelope of services that we can come to the customer and tell them, if you want only our products, that's great. If you want us to deploy, plan, maybe even support on the ongoing basis our products, we can provide these services to you and by that, make the best solution for you.